Hi, my name is Nardo Ferravanti. I'm 23 years old and I serve for Italy. Italy is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And the beauty about Italy is that every single little town has got so much history, so much just incredible, so many incredible places to look at. And then comes the food. I mean, the food in Italy, I think, is what captures everybody's love. So whenever I go back to Italy, I, the first thing I do is see my grandma, and then I go to my Tia Barbara's house, which is my aunt's house, and we have the most amazing lunch. So the waves all over Italy, and especially Rome, it's very inconsistent. You don't get to surf every day. You probably surf, I would say, in the whole year, twice a week, if that. You know, you get moments in the winter where you get a week of straight waves, and in the summer you get times with two months where you have no waves. To become a professional surfer, it's pretty much impossible living in Italy. So you have to go and chase a dream outside. It's a sea. You need a lot to go the right way for it to work out. So when I moved to France, when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I moved to Hostegor, so southwest of France. Hostegor is a world-class destination for surfing. I love spending time there. My, um, my mom, my stepdad, my brother, they all live there today. And that's pretty much my home for me. And whenever I go back, I love to spend time there. But 2015, you know, I was gonna be 17 and I'm like, okay, I might be too young, but I could have a chance at qualifying for the world tour. And the very first event of the year um, was a pipeline, the Vulcan Pipe Pro in Hawaii. Very first heat, first wave, this wave came in, took off late, slammed super hard on the reef. I had the most insane pain going straight through my spine. Um, I knew something was wrong. Sure enough, fractured vertebrae, broken back. Only eight months after was the ISA World Games under 18, and it was my last year in the under 18s. It was a little bit early to go back into competition, but I felt pretty good. And since it was my last chance, I'm like, okay, I have to try at least. One man team, Italy didn't have anybody else surfing uh, in the ISA, and I felt like I was surfing really good, gaining confidence every heat. I came to finals day. I had probably one of the best heats I've ever had in my career still today. Ended up getting a 10 on my first wave and a nine on my second wave and basically wrapped up the final super quick, which doesn't happen very often. And that was probably one of the only times I've ever gotten emotional in a competition. Winning, yes, it's cool, it's like, you're stoked, you just won a contest. But for me, it was more about what I just went through the, you know, in the last 12 months. There was so much that I had to you know, overcome. Winning that final was like, okay, I'm back, let's do this. <laughs> 2019 was another tough year for me. I had another injury, which um, I dislocated the sh my shoulder. Basically missed six events on tour. I missed the ISA in Japan. Not only my year on tour, but my chances for qualification for the Olympics basically went from three to one. Came to Australia in 2020, and the very first event at Manly was a QS 10,000, and I won it, which was the biggest ever result for me. I was so excited for the year to start, and then literally the day that Manly finished, the world shut down. COVID's been tough for everyone. You know, I can say it's been tough for me, it's been tough for everybody, but I really tried to make the most out of, you know, spending time at home. I got to spend more time at home with my family. I got to really work on my surfing and how to, you know, really become a better surfer, not only a better competitor. When surfing got announced into the Olympics, I think it was so exciting. It was such a new world that, you know, it opened surfing to a whole new world. You know, surfing is a relatively small sport. 
And now, I think in the next 12 months, it's really gonna grow. It's gonna hit so many different countries that I've never even heard of surfing. And, you know, Italy in a way is, I wouldn't say one of those countries, but when you go to Italy, people talk about soccer, they talk about MotoGP, Formula One. Surfing isn't very common in Italy. And for me, it would be a dream come true to go to the Olympics. Um, I've been watching it since I was the biggest grommet at home with my family. Every single sport, winter and summer Olympics. And to be able to say that I was one of the surfers that did the first ever Olympics, something special. Now, 2019 didn't help me, my injury qualifying, took out my two chances, but in El Salvador, I think I have a really good chance. And if I deserve to be on tour, I deserve to be on the Olympics. And I know because I put the work into it, I know that you know my surfing is there, but the ISA is a whole new world. Um, you go there, you could lose first round, like you could win. And anybody can achieve that dream. So I think you just gotta believe in it. It's gonna be so exciting. Why do I do this? For me, why I compete, why I surf, it's simple. I wanna be a world champion. I wanna be the best possible surfer I can be. And that's why I work hard every day in the water, outside of the water, because, you know, I want to give it all in my next, you know, 10, 15 years, no regrets. I want to finish my career. I want to make sure that I let it all out. I give it my all and whether I become a world champion, whether I win events, whatever it is, I want to make sure that I left nothing out there.